be here with you. This is your opportunity to ask me some questions. I don't know if I'll have the answer, but I might have some more questions on your questions. We'll find out. And I might have some questions. <laughs> so based on your questions. <laughs> So uh, this is our opportunity to get to know each other. And I don't know if there's, I do need you to speak up really loud if you don't have a mic. Okay. Oh, Karen, rock and roll. Thank you. <laughs> need someone, can you turn it on, Mary? Oh, we're I probably don't. In a hush, so we're And I'm singing as loud as I can. Yeah, yeah, I bet. Check, check. There. there we go. Thank you. Uh, thank you for being here. It was lovely this morning. I just have two questions before I go back to my tuna salad. <laughs> what makes you want to come from a lovely little town like Santa Cruz, where things are laid back? to the fast-paced orange <laughs> county, <laughs> number one. And number two, what is your plan to bring into our congregation some new blood, young families? Uh, those are great questions. Thank you. Tell me your name. Jimmy Van. Jimmy? I, be I belong to this lady right okay, there. Okay, Jimmy. Thank you. Um, so the first question was what, what, you know, I must not be in my right mind. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. Santa Cruz is an amazing place to live. I've lived there for four years. I was called to Santa Cruz to, um, I really think, to be their long term interim minister. That community didn't have a minister for four, five years. And um, I came in, and my job was to rebuild trust, to reveal the love that was already there, to rebuild the teams. And um, the pandemic has, I don't know about you, did, it, did the pandemic crystallize anything for you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anybody else kind of look at your life and say, hmm, am I in the right place right now? And so that, um, the pandemic coupled with a desire to be in a more, um, uh, a community that is more of a bedroom community than a resort community, was uh, and I know you all think you're a resort community, but you probably haven't been to Santa Cruz because <laughs> Santa Cruz is really a resort community. Um, I feel like when I believe me, the vibration here, you know, I'm very sensitive to energy, and the vibration here is is there's a lot more activity, there's a lot more buzz. Uh, seems like people are um, in the real world, and my ministry. I came up in this teaching as a career woman, as a very involved mother, um, very busy with life. And this teaching gave me an amazing trajectory that I would have never had. My life just turned around in amazing ways. And I feel like San Clemente and this area um, is calling me to minister in that way. So this kind of answers your second question in that I think that there's a broader audience for what I have to offer. Um, I have a value that I can only take you as far as I've been. And so where I've been is really beginning to um, grab a hold of this teaching to really find deep meaning in my life, to, to make meaning in my life um, not just be, by becoming a minister, but understanding how I could actually integrate spiritual practice in my everyday work life. And so I think that, um, I think our world needs that. What would be your ideas of how to make that happen? How to reach those people? Or new people? When I was, I'm not going to answer your question directly, so <laughs> I'm going to own that right now. When I was being interviewed by uh, your uh, board of trustees, your board very, with a lot of authority, your board president asked me, am I willing to take full responsibility for the success and growth of this community? And my answer was no. 
Good answer. Yeah. Um, I'm not willing to take full responsibility for anything this community wants to do. I'm willing to collaborate. I'm willing to work with you. I'm willing to learn what you're the eyes and the ears for this community. I need a team. I need people who are going to really, really clue me in on what's happening here in San Clemente, what the needs are. Um, I do have an idea about um, plugging into the business community because we have this wonderful business upstairs getting, um, I, when I visited here in the spring, I noticed it was a very active um, chamber of commerce. I think the way to reach the community is to reach out. Yes. And we can do that through social media. We can do that through um, little articles. When I, um, I had a tax practice for 15 years. I was a tax accountant. Yes, I was. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I spent 30, 35 years in the wrong career making it right. <laughs> and the last, the last iteration was as a tax accountant. And one of the things that I did was I would, um, I, I paid for space in the local newspaper and I invited people to ask me questions and then I would answer them. And it gave people a sense of who I was. My business is called Compassionate Tax Service. And I often drew people who, well, you know, it's consciousness. I drew people towards me that were looking to uh, have a, a more comfortable experience when doing their taxes. So, so I think we could do something like that. We could, we could do a, a little, you know, question and answer uh, uh, ad. I feel like my strength is in the power of the two or more. So as we come together with the things that are important to you, we can also come together with the ideas about how to do that outreach. I am aware that this community's youth program needs a real pick me up. And so I think bringing families in and, and strengthening the youth, the youth program is an important way to, to build the community and to bring people in, the, in there. You know, the millennials, they're going to do what they want to do, but but they're soon going to be the the forty somethings who are trying to find meaning in their life, and so I really think that sort of target audience for science of mind is those folks that are um, stuck in a grind, wanting to you know some kind of longing that bubbles up in them, and I think we could we can address that longing. I know it wasn't a direct answer; I mean, couldn't give you a list, but. <laughs> But I, I do strongly believe that this is a we, a we problem and a we solution that we work it together. Any other questions? Thank you very much. It's you, Rick. Just a second. Hi, Reverend Alice. Um, I have, I'd like to ask you the metaphysical interpretation of an event. Uh, that happened this past week that was in the news. Um, <clears throat> were, are you aware of the incident where um, 30 cows escaped from a slaughterhouse? Where 30 what? Cows. Cows? Escaped from a slaughterhouse. No, it wasn't. Yes, uh, 30 cows escaped from a slaughterhouse in Pico Rivera, I believe it was. Uh, they were able to round up uh, 28 of them uh, they they shot and killed one of them, and the 30th one, um, I, I believe a celebrity, Diane Warren, uh, spoke up and said that she would rescue this cow and see that it goes to the farm sanctuary. So uh, I would like to know your interpretation of that event. Um. Well, thank you for asking me about that. I, um, I have to give that a little bit of thought. I think uh, we make the meaning, so I could have a metaphysical interpretation. Uh, Reverend Judy could have her own uh, interpretation. Um, and I guess I'll say it this way. I'm going to share with you what's, what that event reflects in me. And it's not the metaphysical interpretation it's what it means to alice and what it means to alice is that there were that there was an opportunity for these beloved compassionate beautiful caring animals that were able to uh, escape 
Um, and when I when I look at that, it it's sort of I was talking about it a little bit when I say we get caught in this grind of life, and so the cows could represent that opportunity for us to um, try to escape the lot in life that we have. Um, I think as we as if, when you think about it, the the fact that they were many of them were uh, corralled and brought back um, to the slaughterhouse might could mean that we're stuck in a loop and it's time for us to try to break free and to be more conscious about our lot in life so that we don't continually get rounded up and get sucked back into the grind in life. And that's the best I can do in about 30 seconds. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I can tell that animals are really, um, you know, an important part of your life and that you have a lot of compassion for them. So I, I, I'm sure that there was a lot of feeling for you as you read that article. And um, I have a couple of questions. The first is that you, you've moved around a lot um, to you know, different centers. Um, when you started yourself and was there for five years, which was the longest based on what I was reading. Well, I was just wondering what, what caused you to move from sure. Maryland to New Jersey to Santa Cruz? I, I, yes, thank you. Go ahead. Do you have more, more do you want to ask? I, it's been a long time since we've had face-to-face -face classes here. I'm not sure what your outlook is on uh, education. And sure. Thank you. Sure. Um, there was a little misinterpretation on my information. I've never lived in New Jersey. So uh, I lived in Maryland for 45 years, and I stayed in my home church for 11 years. And then I, um, without, there's no, there, I don't have time to tell you the whole tale. I'd love to have coffee and, and share that with you, but I will tell you that I was the interim minister for my home center, and then they brought in a new minister, and after two years, I knew it was time for me to go. So that was 11 years, and so I moved my license to New Jersey uh, because I love my home community, and I didn't want to detract from what they were building. And I had a dear friend in Jersey, and so uh, Michelle, Reverend Michelle Wadley, and I would go up to uh, New Jersey once a weekend and serve in her community, knowing that I was gonna start my own center. And so I started a center in Maryland and um, I was there for five years. And I went through a, um, a divorce that upended my life completely. And uh, I had been married for 31 years and um, it was unexpected. <laughs> it was not something I initiated. And I sold my business and I was called to Santa Cruz to move across the country um, after being in one place for 45 years. And so I went to Santa Cruz because I was called. And I feel like there's a, I have this amazing, brilliant assistant minister that I have been working with who was considered for my position in Santa Cruz. And um, his name's Elijah Christopher. And Reverend Elijah was not ready at the time. He wasn't a reverend even. And so there is something that's happening where there's an opportunity for me. I feel like I've been called to this community and it offers an opportunity for Elijah to raise up and to really stand in his power as a minister. So it's a little different than what you, you, know, what you read on paper. And I really appreciate the question, thank you. Um, I, don't, I don't think that I, um, you know, I, I'm a real, I mean, I've lived in my home for 24 years, so I don't know that I'm, I'm really that jazzed about moving, to tell you the truth. So, um, but I am jazzed about science and learning and where I'm called. Um, and speaking of that, I love classes. I think classes are where we really begin to blossom as religious scientists. It's where we open up, where we discover our own authenticity, where life begins to start working again. And so um, my take on classes is that, that, that now that 
the pandemic seems to be subsiding and we're being able to be face to face that uh, I'll work with the ecclesiastical core, which I don't know that you call them that, but that for me is the practitioners and the staff ministers that will work together to outline a, an education program and that will offer education both on Zoom and in person. You yourself teach, have you taught classes? And then... Say that again? Have you taught classes? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I've taught many classes. Thank you. I've, I've, I've written a couple of classes. Um, I've taught classes. I've taught foundations uh, a handful of times. Uh, there, there's some new curriculum that's just come out that's really juicy. They shorten the weeks, you know, which I think really is a response to the lifestyle that we have these days. There's um, the mental equivalent, uh, spiritual practices and principles. I've taught that recently. Um, I taught a class where I did a mashup between two other classes and called it um, uh, the, uh, Becoming an Evolutionary. <laughs> um, and so I brought in mystical studies along with The Untethered Soul, which is a great book about how we go within and build our practice. Um, so yes, I've taught classes and I love teaching. Thank you very much. Sure. You're gonna ask me if I have any children. <laughs> well, let's see. Yes, good morning, Reverend Alice. I don't even know if I need the mic because I usually got a loud voice anyway. So um, I did want to ask you, what do you feel are the challenges about being a reverend or being a minister in this, you know, this teaching? Mm -hmm. What are the challenges and what are the joys? Um, I think I think that, and I actually had a wonderful meeting on Friday with uh, the practitioners and the ministers, and I was very clear to say that um, one of the challenges for me is that I can really get, um, I'll just say it plain, I can be a bit of a workaholic. And when you don't have balance in your life, your the thing that you think you're spending a lot of time on at work is actually it diminishes that experience for you and your students. And so for me, the challenge is to continually take care of myself and make sure that I'm doing good self-care. And the other thing that I think is challenging in ministry is being in relationship. And so my relationship is a priority. I'm going to embarrass you, David. Would you please stand? This is my partner, David Schutz. So the challenges really are, I think, I think ministry can be really hard on relationships. And so the com combination of self-care and making the relationship a priority um, really help to stay in balance. One of the joys of ministry for me, um, and this is a personal joy, and I'm not sure all ministers enjoy this, is um, working collaboratively, oh, I know I can say the word, working in the power of the two or more with, with a group of people, beginning to um, mine the wisdom that is everywhere. Like, you know, there's a, when I came up in Science of Mind, there was some kind of this idea that the minister was sort of a font of wisdom and you would all come here and sit in your chairs and maybe, you know, open your head and I would pour some wisdom into you. Uh, I'm not that kind of minister. <laughs> um, for me, uh, it's, I want you to tap into your wisdom. I want us to share that wisdom together and grow together. I think that is the, um, way communities will grow as we continue to value each other and the innate wisdom that lives within each one of us. Um, so that's a real joy for me. Um, it's a real joy for me to be in a class and watch a student get it. It's a real joy for me to see demonstrations from prayer. It's a supreme joy for me to have my own demonstrations, and I've had a ton of them. Uh, I, I really love this teaching. It is, it is completely opened up my life. There have been instant demonstrations and then there have been demonstrations that have taken years, but nonetheless, they've been demonstrations. And so those are real, the real joys are seeing God in action as um, I watch people open up to their lives in new ways. Do 
you have any thoughts or hello <laughs> thank you for being here thank you for coming from beautiful santa cruz to beautiful sacramento <laughs> And do you have any thoughts or visions about what you would like to have with the music program? Well, Diane, I think the, the music program and I will come together and talk about what wants to come from us. Because they're, they're, the thing that I know about ministry is that it's not, I've already said this in, in one light, but I'm going to say it again in a little bit of a different way. I... The way I minister is I look for what God and spirit wants to have come through me. And it gets called forth through your spiritual practice. Ever go to a Sunday service and say, oh my God, how did they know? How did they sing that song? How did they say that on the platform? It's because we have a, a deep connection with one another. And so it, to answer your question, the music program will come together and we'll vision and we'll look at what re this community really wants from us so that we can serve them in the highest way. It's a personal question. Have you moved down here yet or do you, are you planning on it? <laughs> No, I haven't. Um, you know, you haven't made me an offer yet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have not been made a, a tangible offer. I believe there's a two week period of voting. And then there is, uh, uh, then once the community votes, whether they want me to be your spiritual leader um, or to continue to look, then um, I'll begin to move in that direction. I have. Um, because you only brought one candidate forward, I did tell my board of trustees so that they could begin to move. I mean, it's it's emotional. I mean, you just went through it, right? It's emotional when you it's time to move on. And so, uh, you know, my board is working with this and we will probably tell the community in Santa Cruz in July. And then I'll try to figure out, you know, place to live and move again. Uh, we have a, a beautiful home in Santa Cruz that we'll probably hold on to. Um, actually, I'm from the East Coast, so it, it's, a, it's a manufactured home, but it's, it's seven tenths of a mile from the ocean and it's a great little getaway. And so we'll probably hold on to that and look for something to rent here. So can I ask you all a favor if you see of a good place to live and you know of something that might be coming available, please let me know. I can use your help because I really don't know the area very well. Thank you. We have an extra room in the back here. <laughs> <laughs> and we may take it. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's where David will go. <laughs> There's indoor plumbing and everything. <laughs> okay, I'm going to ask the question that you wondered why we hadn't asked yet. How many children do you have? And how old are they? I am really interested. I have two children, a, a son and a daughter. My son is 39 and my daughter is 37. Uh, I have a wonderful daughter in love that my son is married to, and they have two boys, and they live in Livermore in Northern California in the Bay Area. And then I have a daughter who, if she knew I told a story about her, she would be really angry with me, but it doesn't stop me from telling stories. <laughs> um, her name is, uh, my son's name is John, and my daughter's name is Emma. And she lives in Baltimore with her three children. And she's a single mother who is really struggling with whether she wants to continue law school or not. But she's a really powerful young woman. And, um, and she's really coming into her own. Wow. And I have, yeah, so I have five grandchildren. Wow. You mm -hmm. yeah. I can't hold that up. I have five grandchildren. No. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Any other? Ah, there we go. Reverend Arthur. Uh, this is a silly question since I know the community. I know you very well, I think. I want to know something I don't know. 
You don't have anything. <laughs> anything. All right, here we go. At 15, I was in a disco floor show. <laughs> True or false? <laughs> Uh, but I don't remember the moves. <laughs> we it was uh, the it was staying alive and Saturday Night Fever and the Club Venus hired um, junior models to be in a dancing portion. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was about that. That's right. There you go. There you go. <laughs> and the other thing you should know is I cannot carry a tune. So poor Reverend Judy had to listen to my little off key trying to keep up with the music here. So don't ask me to sing. <laughs> Anybody else? Well, here's what I want to make, uh, give you an input. Oh, we have another question. You co-authored a book, is that correct? I thought I read that. In that is, I edited a book. Is that going to be carried in our bookstore, you think? Sure. Absolutely. Of course. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> it, Thank you. Um, it's actually a really um, potent program called um, uh, 40 Days to Freedom, a Lenten, moder a Lenten practice for the modern mind. And it's a practice that you can do during Lent to unearth subtle, um, negative thought patterns that you might have about yourself and the idea is that you've become freer after you've looked and so there are little prompts with journals and it also makes a really nice program for the for the community so if if uh, the ecclesiastical team and i like the idea we might do it one year thank you i um reverend michelle wadley is uh one of my original prayer partners and she uh she authored most of the book and I edited a lot of it and stylized it and, and uh, yeah, it's a really nice piece of work. Thank you for asking. I think that um, as the uh, days and weeks go on, I, I might be uh, contacting you. I want to ask you some questions. I want to know what you really love about your center. I want to know what are the things that um, you really care about that you might want to see differently. And so if that will be in great conversations that we can have one-on-one -on -one in, a, in a place where you feel safe to tell me how you feel. I have another question. Okay, this is already asked already, but I just want to know yeah. next. Um, what is it that drew you to our center? What, what called you here? I, I, I think it's a great question. I, I think I really began to look at what I was doing in, uh, thank you, in Santa Cruz. Um, the Santa Cruz community is a lovely community and I really care about them. And, and we have a, um, a wonderful and deep relationship. Um, really, it's, it's powerful. Um, and, and this community, I, I'm very interested in growing science of mind and this community is very interested in um, while there is some talk about growth they're more interested in the keeping the community quaint as it is and so um, i began to wonder where i could really serve best and then when i read your profile and i read the dedication it was you, you had a wonderful vision and a mission and your board of trustees had their own, I'll call it a centering statement, I'm sure you call it something else, um, but they had a statement of that talked about who they wanted to be as the leaders of this community and I, I was really impressed by that. And so um, I applied, not really thinking I would be standing here <laughs> and being invited to be your spiritual director. I'm, I'm actually, I'm trying to catch up with myself here. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't expect it to, to happen, but that, that is the story of my ministerial career. I was a reluctant practitioner, I was a reluctant <laughs> ministerial student. Um, you know, I keep saying, who, me? And God keeps saying, yeah, you. And um, I think that's what's happening here today. So thank you. Yes, we have another question over here. I'm just getting your work out. 
Yeah, that's yeah, good. Man, man. I need our exercise after 15 months of sitting in front of Zoom. <laughs> I wondered if you have, um, maybe you don't know enough about the community, but do you have uh, any idea how we might include people of color in our congregation? And do you have that as a priority? And do I have what? Do you consider that a priority in your? Own? I absolutely consider it a priority. Diversity and inclusion is really important to me. And um, the way that you bring people of color to your community is you need to have them on the platform so they can see themselves. Yeah. Um, well, in respect, there's a there's a very strong community here of beautiful souls. We are all, um, you know, white people for the most part. There's a, a from what I'm told, very small minorities here. We don't have a lot of LGBTQ uh, people. We don't have a lot, we, uh, we don't have any people of color, other maybe some Hispanic individuals, um, Latinos. And so the way to bring people like that into your communities to bring them on the platform. And now, you know, if you don't have them in your practitioner core, then you bring them up, you bring them up through guest speakers, you bring them up as guest musicians, you bring them up as you bring their writing and their poetry to the platform, you bring them onto the platform uh, by bringing forth the wealth of wisdom that lives in alternative communities. Um, um, it's actually really important to me um, and I'm with you, it's a challenging problem. Uh, I don't know if it's a problem, I think it's an opportunity for us to be more um, open and accepting and loving. And I, I tried to say that a little bit in my talk this morning about how it's important for us to, to really begin to create a greater opening in our hearts for people who are different. I remember, um, you know, taking a lot of diversity training that State Centers for Spiritual Living offers, and I remember being <clears throat> lovingly schooled by uh, Rafe Ellis, who told me what inclusion meant. I thought it meant making sure that they were at the table while we were, well, for whatever we were doing for our projects, you know, that we would make sure that we would have people of color at the table. That is not inclusion because it says, come play in my sandbox with my toys, with my sand, the way I like to play. Inclusion is inviting different cultures and different heritages and different ideas and different ways of being so that it can better inform who we are. It's a big job and it uh, takes people who really care about that. So I'll, I'll be checking out, I'm checking with you later. <laughs> Yes. Have you had lunch yet? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't hungry, but I might take a nibble before the workshop. Oh. Yeah. Um, if you have more questions for me, I want to tell you that I want to be available to you. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit addicted to my device, so I usually see email, <laughs> um, text messages, things like that. Um, Although sometimes the, the calendar fills up pretty quickly and you have to plan for those face-to-face -face visits. So um, hopefully you'll uh, reach out to me. I, I look forward to um, moving forward. How about that? Look forward to moving forward. Is that a double? <laughs> Thank you very much. Take a break and then. Yeah. Great. That's, I think we can always a break, right? And then we'll be back at 12.30. And have our workshop. We'll do the workshop at 12:30. Thank you.